Okay, I just want to go over a quick ladder build here that I've got going on for a client. And I was really um, looking forward to putting a ladder on the back of my Forerunner here. And decided to wait though, because I'm about to build a rear bumper and just replace the whole thing. I'm gonna have a swing out on the left here with a jerry can holder. And then I'm gonna integrate a ladder into that. And then on the right hand side here, I'm gonna have a, a tire swing out. So. That's coming soon. I'm actually going to move the hitch up a little higher because this is reducing uh, departure clearance and angles, so I don't want that on there. But anyways, going to have a ladder, and I'll show, flick a little quick photo up of what it looks like on my truck. But uh, this is for a client who's got a third gen, or sorry, fourth gen as well, an 03, I think. And I'm going to quickly go over how simple it is to build a ladder like this. It looks like it's complicated. It really isn't. Or, you know, you can pay for uh, $400 for one online and wait for a few months to get it to come. But really, here's, here's the template. And I'm going to quickly go over how I build it. Yeah, I could go over the, the process of building it, but it's, you know, it's just monotonous. It's really not a whole lot to it. But I just got this template um, of the actual ladder and then put this on top of my, my truck. This actually fits really well on my truck. And you know the um the mount is going to go up at the top here on a plate and i'll show you that in a minute and then these angles here are what I, and distances of what i've put on for this and i'm just going to show you how i kind of cut those and how i put them all together pretty simple um here's what i would suggest though is that you make the top bracket in the bottom bracket first and i'll show you what i've done there and then you can cut most of this um all these pieces but wait till you get to the bottom. So that final piece down there is gonna change depending on how you've actually made the bracket. So don't make the whole ladder first, make most of it and then put it into place. So really what you're gonna do is cut the top. You're gonna to have enough clearance for it to go onto a top plate, which I'll show you. The extension to clear your spoiler if you have one. And then these are angles that I just put together that work for me. You can change them if you want this angle up a little bit higher and then the bottom part you're not going to have this you're not going to put this piece in here this piece here you're going to wait until the end because you want to have the lower bracket in place i'm going to show you a different video once that paint dries but i'm going to go over a little bit of the build now and then i'm going to throw it onto my truck just to show you how that looks but you're going to build the whole ladder weld it all together actually if you want you can tack weld it or fully weld it and then once you've put it up onto your truck without this bottom piece in there, you're actually gonna take the specific measurements. And it's important because as you can see, the door curves in a little bit and the top, it's lower here than it is over there a little bit. So you wanna wait until you get that final bracket in so you can measure the exact distance and angles between the bottom part of your ladder and how you're gonna actually mount it into the, the mounting plate. So anyways, let's take you over to the, the garage here and we'll show you how I actually this up but I just use one inch square tubing super simple to cut on uh, something like this this is a, a tack life 10 inch compound miter saw actually and it's great because it's got two different speeds on it and I'll put the, the link in the description so I usually have it forward because I'm usually <laughs> cutting metal with this if I put it on the back it increases the RPMs from 3200 up to 4500 so at the lower speed here it's 3200 RPM kind of still quick but a good speed for cutting metal and if I want it to go a little faster for cutting wood then I can go up to 4500 RPM so it's a good little saw works really well um, super happy with it and it's done a great job of cutting through you know quarter inch thick two two inch tubing or plate you know, we've got some 3 16 inch plate here that i'm using for a tire mount carrier and awesome little saw anyways so what i would typically recommend that you do is do a cardboard template like this get everything cut out and generally lined up in the angles that you like this worked well for me in a fifth gen ladder that i made recently they're all kind of the same. It's just the specific height that you're looking for different. So this one here, two inches, maybe two and a half. I'm gonna show you the, the mounting plates in a minute, but just, I just keep it simple, 45 degree angle here, cause this is gonna be 90 degrees to give you a nice flat top. And then this is a 40 degree angle. So I'm gonna do 20 degrees off that and 20 degrees off that. 
and that's going to give me that 40, sorry, it's an 80 degree angle. I'm going to do 40 degree here, so not quite 45, and then 40 degree on this tube here, and that's going to give me the, the 80 degrees total that's going to come down to there. So 90 would be straight down, but 80 is a little less, right? And then that's a 29 and a half inch tube. So from this point here down to that point there, 29 and a half inches works really good. This is a 20 degree change in direction. So I'm going to do 10 degree off that tube and then 10 degree on that, which works so easy on the miter saw there. So awesome, super simple build. And then this is about 12 to 14 inches here, depending on how far you want that down. So I would say cut it to 14 for now, right? And then just you could cut it straight because what you're going to do is once you get it put up onto the truck and mount it up on the top plate, then you're actually going to um, measure and cut this lower bottom bracket here. And I'll show you that in the, in the next thing. But this is basically, well, this is, this is the top plate and it's just some uh, 16 gauge steel that I cut bent the ends as you can see and they hook over top of the door at the very top of the the build and then I drilled a hole and put a M12 bolt through it or sorry an M10 no sorry M10 this is an M10 bolt and uh, just a little less than an inch and then the ladder so here this is the mount and you can see these holes drop right down onto these bolts here and then that secures it from the top and I'm just going to put a, a stainless steel um, washer, maybe a split washer or a lock, lock washer and a, a nylon lock nut on top of that. And then before I mount this onto the roof, I'm going to cover that with some 3M uh, VHB, I think, very high bond tape. Where is that? Here it is. So I'm just going to do this tape here. Works great. I've got lots of that. Not expensive at all. And then, what were these? These are the bolts. Yeah, M10 by 16 millimeter. This is the bolts that I'm using for that top part. And then the bottom bracket is kind of cool. I just painted these with a third coat of enamel. So the bottom bracket here actually fits up underneath the door like that. And actually, I'm going to pop open the, the truck and I'll show you how I'm going to mount this in. Some people, they put like a little set screw in the bottom part here and pinch it into the, that little small opening there. They pinch the, the metal on the door with a little set screw that comes through the bottom. It works, and then they put some VHB tape across the face here. It works, but for me anyways, especially on my, um, my fourth gen, on this side here, there's a plug right there in the bottom of my door, and I'll show you in a minute. And I pop that plug out, and I can put one of these M10 bolts right through that hole with a washer, and I secure it with another um, lock nut on the bottom, and the door still opens and closes perfectly. And so all I have to do is drill another hole in the bottom of the door, which I'm totally fine doing on my truck. I have no problems with that. And then doing another washer under there. Totally works great super secure, way stronger than just putting a set screw through here, which I, I can do and I've done on ladder builds before, but I just prefer to put that in there. And I'm gonna show you what that's all put together after this, but I just wanted to do this quick video now showing you um, how I made the ladder. Super simple. Once you've got this bottom piece in place, so it's up underneath the door like that, and this is the face that's outside the door, and then this lower ladder part, that bracket there, is just, I just took some, um, one eighth inch steel, four inches wide, um, however long this is. I think this ladder is like uh, eight and a half inch rungs, lying 10, 10 and a half inches wide. This is just a little CB antenna mount for a client wanted on there. And then these screw holes here just pop down on top of these and then you just secure it with a nut. These are actually quarter, uh, quarter inch uh, screw bolts and I just you can see I just welded them right onto the face of that super strong <laughs> really secure they're not going anywhere um, and anyways you just pop this bracket onto here bolt it all in and now you've got a gap because remember you built the ladder to here and you didn't add on this bottom part and once you've built the whole ladder right you've built the whole ladder 
then you can specifically measure the exact length and degree that you need to make this bottom extension. And I'll tell you right now, this extension is going to be different than that one. So if you make them exactly the same, it won't line up. So that's the build, super simple. Once this paint dries, I'm going to throw it back up on my truck and show you how it all looks and goes together. And then I can give you a better idea of you know, what it looks like all together, but then also how to measure for these bottom pieces. So that's the ladder build, pretty simple. Um, yeah, it takes time. It's like a process like everything else, but really not complicated. And then for a finish on this, I used, oh, this stuff is awesome. A little water-based degreaser. So I used this rusty metal primer. You can put it on rusty metal. Here's the thing too, when you're working with steel, as soon as you take the finish off that, that mill scale that comes in the, um, from the steel yard, it's starting to rust. You're going to get a little bit of rusting on there. So I usually sand it down as much as I can, clean it with a, either acetone or lacquer thinner just to get any junk off it and oils. And then I'll hit it with this primer, one coat of that. And then so far, I've put two coats of this on, and I just brush it on with a little foam brush. Not the smoothest finish, but that's okay. I'm, I'm just really looking, especially around the welds. I want to dab it in with this, the tip of this brush and push it in and let that paint soaked sponge just get in there and grip and cover up completely all the different little welds. Because if you don't cover those properly, they're gonna to start to rust later. So that's perfect. So I'll put two coats of this as a Rust-Oleum high performance protective enamel. And then for a finish, you're gonna choose the, the actual sheen that you want. So these are semi-gloss. I don't really care about that because I'm gonna be covering it. And I'm, in fact, for this one, I, like, I do like a spray finish, so I'm going to put this high performance enamel spray on. And this is a, uh, what do we have here? I think it's a flat black. I can't remember. Flat or semi gloss. It doesn't actually say. But I'm going to go with that. And I like the, just the spray finish is going to look really good. The other option that you can do, if I was doing some other. I got a lot of stuff here. If I was doing some, a bunch of other um, builds, I might actually coat it with some Raptor liner. This works great. Uh, this is a tintable. I got some black tint here, or I've got some black Raptor liner here that I could use as well. That's a great finish. I really like the Raptor liner finish. One thing though with that, you know, a little tent build that we're working on. One thing with the Raptor liner, you need some heat for it to get a proper cure on it, if you want to say it that way. And usually by like 75 to 80 degrees minimum, you want to have that curing. So if you're painting it like right now, it's like 50 something, 60 degrees out, too cool for it to cure properly. I can probably coat it in this temperature, but it's not going to harden the way it would as it gets into that like higher 75, 80 plus degree range. So once you get into that temperature, even if you coat it earlier and it's fine, it's done, it's cured, it's dried, it's not gonna get a super hard finish until it gets up over 75 or so degrees. So keep that in mind if you're finishing something, if you really want it super hard quickly for a client or yourself, then just make sure you're gonna be doing it when there's a lot of heat in there. So anyways, here's the ladder. Come together really easily. This is like the second or third one that I've built and it's really, it's not complicated. Round tubing, I don't work in round tubing yet. Um, I don't have a bender. I don't want to get a kinker. <laughs> it doesn't properly bend tube and create the proper smooth angles. I'm going to get some dive. I just haven't had clients that have been looking for that. And I prefer the, the square tube look on my truck. So I've just been using the square tubing. But round tubing would actually be super simple. You're just bending some angles in there. And then uh, the only thing with round tubing is just creating the rungs in you could do that with a pipe notcher or just take, take your time and cut out the little angles that are going to join the, the rungs to the rails, um, but not complicated. You're welding it anyway, so you're going to fill in any gaps that way. But anyways, there's the ladder. It looks good, I think, and uh, it looks really good when it's on the truck for sure. Um, and I'm just so tempted to make one for my own truck, but I got to get that rear bumper done and um, I'll go with that instead. So that ladder on there it would be more useful for me anyway so anyways guys hopefully that was useful information for building a ladder if you have any questions let me know i'm happy to answer them um, i'm enjoying 
learning how to use my welder and my plasma cutter down there works great and um, this is a titanium unlimited 200 from harbor freight it's about 7 750 or something like that amazing machine i can do flex core um, meg i can do stick welding if i wanted to uh, punish myself and have some frustration or even mig welding if i wanted to get some extra different gas and try that but this is a great machine um, i've got it set up for 220 um, 240 volt system here which is awesome works so powerfully i don't have any problems getting anything with that and then i've got a shielding gas as well that i work with and um, this is great for creating nice clean welds so i would totally recommend getting shielding gas this system here i think i got it from uh, tractor supply ordered the tank empty wasn't that expensive um, wasn't that bad you know a couple hundred bucks i think and then the gas in there is like 60 if i want to do a cha exchange and tr tractor supply but if i take it to a welding supply place and just have them refill it it's only like 35 dollars. so i usually do that anyways um hopefully that makes sense have a great uh, day, and um, if you have any questions on this ladder build, let me know. Oh, uh, one quick thing too, you can see the, the difference in the angle at the top there. See, it's, this is the left side of the roof, and you can see it's a little longer here than there. So you want to make sure that as you're putting the, the rungs up there, you're not making this one exactly the same as that one. So I just get a torpedo level and put it on there and make sure I've got the height properly set. But, so those heights over there in the ends of your um, very ends of your ladder, they're going to be different on each side. Forgot to mention that, but similar to the bottom. So, anyways, have a great day. Talk soon. Bye. Okay, we're almost done the ladder build here. I've got one more coat of enamel that I want to put on here. So I've got a coat of primer, two coats of enamel that I've got brushed on. I'm going to show you how I attach this in a second. But at the top, I've got a little plate. There's the M10 bolts that I talked about before and we're just going to put some uh, nylon lock nuts down on those and that'll hold that down quite nicely and then once I spray finish it it'll take it rid of get rid of all the brush marks on that probably give it a light sand in too before I, I uh, spray finish it but this is a kind of a neat feature here so I've got this little section here so I've got a I've got to line this but there's a hole right up in here that I'm going to line that up with see if I can find that the, actually put this down here so I don't know if you can see that but yeah there we go so up in here there is a, a little plug that fourth gens at least have on them and so what I've done is pop that plug out and I'm gonna on my clients I'm gonna drill another hole over here and then line this up with that one plug hole and then with the other one as well so I'll show you under here like that and then once I've got that secured down at the bottom then the next step here and this is where we get a really tight finish or fit as you can see here, let's see, we'll pull this back. The bolt, the little quarter inch bolts don't quite line up if I just place this on. So what I have to do, and creates a really tight finish, is to pull the ladder and pull it down to snap it into place. Like that. I've just made it so perfectly tight that this is going to be taped down so once i bolt this bottom bracket into the door i'm going to put before i put it in there's going to be some vhb tape that i put on the inside up against the the door itself and i'm going to do the same thing under this plate here on the roof so that's not coming out that's going to be stuck in there really well and then the ladder so I grab it and pull it back, flexes it open, and then I snap it onto the bolt. So even right now, it's not bolted onto the roof at all. It's not bolted into the door. It's not even stuck on. That's pretty solid. <laughs> like, I could even go down that. Other than this is just going to slide a little bit and I don't want to scratch my paint. That's pretty solid on there. I could actually jump up on there and it's not going to pull off anywhere from coming down on the top 
just center it down there. That's going to be a pretty solid ladder build, just the way it is. This is the little CB mount that we've got for him to get into his garage. He's got a three foot antenna that's going to come up perfectly to the height of his rack. And this just fits under his garage by about two or three inches, I think so. Um, I like the way this looks. If I wasn't building a swing out bumper ladder combination with a jerry can thing, um, I would make one of these or take this one and make him another one because I just love the way those ladders look on the uh, back of Forerunner. So anyways, love this build, love the way it looks. Uh, I personally like the square tubing look. Um, now I've got a square tube rack, got square tube rock sliders, and this ladder looks pretty awesome. Um, now for my clients, spoiler, it's thicker than mine. It's a little higher, so I've, that's why I've made this higher. If I was making this for mine, I would have it just barely clear the, the spoiler here and come out and then down. But anyways, like the way this is looking, I'll get another coat on there and then actually uh, I'll do a little video once we've got it installed on his rig because he's got an awesome looking rig and this is going to look super sweet on there. So hopefully you like that. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed building this ladder and I think it's going to look pretty awesome. And here is the final build all installed on Elzar's rig. I think it looks great. It matches really nicely, obviously, with the square tube roof rack that I made a little while ago. And I think we've got some skid plates that we're popping on at some point in the near future. But the ladder looks great. And I have a picture up in a minute of him just using it on the beach. And he loves it. It works great. Solid as a rock on there. And actually not that heavy. So they, I think it's like eight or nine pounds or something. So those standard shocks just lift that gate up really nicely and easily as they do on mine as well when I had it on my rig. But yeah, awesome build. Super simple to do. Not complicated. Uh, give it a shot. I think you're really going to enjoy building that and popping it on your rig.